Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms and in this video tutorial we are going to be implementing the binary search algorithm using C++ programming language so this is the part 2 of this binary search algorithm topic and in the previous video tutorial that is part 1 of binary search we discussed the algorithm we discussed the working we also saw a diagrammatic representation and we went through the algorithm step by step to understand its working so if you have missed that video do check it out it will give you a very clear idea about how exactly binary search works if you already know that and if you are just interested for the programming part that is the implementation part this video is just for you make sure you watch this video till the end and we are going to be using c++ programming you can use any other general purpose programming language like java python c sharp or anything you are comfortable with i am using c++ so with that being said let's get started So I've already opened up my Dave C++ ID. I'm using this ID for C++ programming, and as you can see, I've already created a little bit of C++ code. That is the main function. Now inside this main function, what we'll do is we'll just take the input from the user. So we'll create int x or int num. So this is the number that we will take from the user and search it in our array. So we'll just create an array. For simplicity purpose, I'm hard coding the size. You can also do the dynamic memory allocation part. and take the size from the user if you don't know what dynamic memory allocation is or if you are struggling with c++ programming i have a complete c++ programming tutorials playlist i will drop that link in the video description or you can also see a card so now that we've created the array of size 10 one last thing that we have to do is we have to take the output so what we'll do is we'll create a function a user defined function let's say int binary search okay so this is a function this function will take few arguments like the integer array we will pass the array we will also pass int left that is the left interval int right the right interval and x value that we want to search okay so i hope you know how binary search algorithm works basically binary search algorithm divides the sorted array so we have to have a sorted data structure so it divides the sorted array in two halves we find the midpoint and the value that we want to find out which is this int x so this is int x if this value is greater than the midpoint value of that array then our x will be to the leftmost side of the array right and if this x is smaller than the midpoint value of the array then x value will be to the left hand side of the sub array right so we divide the array into two parts by finding out the midpoint and every time we check the midpoint value with this x value that we want to find out and once we get a match we just return the index position okay i'll also drop the entire algorithm on the right so you can see the algorithm or the pseudo code for this binary search algorithm which we saw in the previous video we'll just go step by step and convert that algorithm into c++ code okay so this is going to be our binary search function it is going to take four values the array left interval right interval and the value that you want to find out so in the main function we'll just first take the value of the array so i'm going to say c out enter 10 integers in ascending order remember that binary search algorithm only works on sorted arrays or sorted data structures that is list data structure or any, any other linear data structure because the main idea of binary search is to divide the array into two halves and it is important that the array or the data structure has to be in a sorted way especially in ascending order in our case okay so now here i am saying enter 10 integers in ascending order so this return 0 is for the int main function okay since our main function has a return type of int that's why we have to return a value anyways we'll use a for loop i'll say int i equals to 0 i less than 10 and i plus plus so we know we have 10 values to take so we are running the loop from 0 to 10 and i'm going to say arr of i so we'll say c in arr of i okay this is how you take input in c plus plus let's rename this to my array okay my arr and over here also i'll make that change so once we take the input of 10 integers in ascending order in the my arr the next thing is we just want to print a message c out enter one number that you want to search in the array right 
and then we will take this num variable that we just created on the top so this is the variable that we created over here and then we have to just say output output is another integer variable that we created on the top equals to binary search okay so this binary search is the function that we created over here we still have to write the code inside but we are calling it and it will return the index position right so that's why it has a return type of int so we will pass our my array over here my arr this is how you pass an array just use the array name and not the square brackets the left would be zero so left is actually the leftmost index position and int right is the rightmost index position the rightmost is nine and the value that we want to find out in this array is just taken over here so we will pass this num over here so initially when we start off obviously the interval is going to be zero and nine that is the leftmost end of the entire array and the rightmost end of the entire array and then we will divide this array into shorter or smaller chunks so that we will do in the binary search function okay and lastly we will say if output equal equal to minus one we will just print a message of c out no match found okay and in the else part if it is not equal to minus one it will mean that we have found the match and the output this variable will be holding the index position so this is output and not output i made a typo so this output variable will be holding the index position where this num variable resides in the array okay so we just have to print that so i'm again gonna copy paste this and we'll say match found at index position and then again just print that index position which is output okay fair enough even if you are not really understanding everything we still have to make this main binary function so let's go step by step you have the algorithm on the right so step number one is to take input take all these inputs so we have passed those inputs in this function over here so basically step number one is already done we pass these values as arguments in this function so step number two is where we start the loop right so we will say while now in the while loop what is the condition left is less than equal to right right so if you watch the previous video obviously you will understand it very well but what we are doing is initially the interval is 0 and 9 so we are searching through the entire array for the first iteration however once we find the midpoint we will check whether the midpoint value is equal to this x that is equal to the num value that you want to find out and if not if it is greater that is if the num value is greater than the midpoint that we find out then we are only interested in the second half so we will reduce that interval so we will increase the left value to the right hand side of the midpoint right so this left value and right value will slowly come closer to each other and there will be a point where left value will no longer be less than equal to right and that is when the while loop will exit and when left value will not be less than equal to right it will mean that we have completely exhausted the interval and now there is no values to search so if we did not find a match we can simply return minus one okay so that's the minus one condition but let's just go step by step let's do step number 2.1 which is finding out the midpoint so i'm going to say int mid equals to left plus right minus left divide by two now step number 2.2 .2 is we have to check if arr of mid so we just found out midpoint over here now we are checking if the value at this midpoint is it equal equal to the value that we want to find out so we passed num over here this num is becoming x over here so these are just placeholders right i hope you know how to pass arguments in a function we've already discussed that in c plus plus programming tutorials so i'm just trying to check if the midpoint that we just found out is the value at the mid index equal equal to the value that we want to search if yes then we simply have to say return mid that is return the index position where the value is matching that's it so this complete function will exit out because when we use the return function the control is transferred from the called function to the calling function so mid value that is the mid index position will be returned from this binary search function and it will be stored in the output variable so we are calling the function over here so the control is transferred to the binary search function and once you use the return statement the control is again transferred back to the calling function that is inside the int main and the value is stored in the output variable this is an integer variable and our return type is also int so that mid index position is stored over here okay 
Now, if there is no match, then we have another else if condition over here. You can see in the algorithm also. So that is 2.3. We are saying else if ARR of mid, if it is less than X, it will mean that our X value, that is the value that you want to find out, lies in the second half of the array, right? So in that case, we will say left equals to mid plus one. So now we are reducing the interval and now the interval will be only between the second half of the array. So if the mid value is less than the value that we want to find out, it means that the value that we want to find out lies in the second half. And this is because the array is sorted already. And hence binary search algorithm only works on sorted arrays or sorted data structures. Okay, so I have your understanding. Now, if ARR of mid is not less than X, if let's say it is greater than or equal to X, in that case, our X value will be in the leftmost side, right, of the array. So we have divided the array at the midpoint and we have two halves, the left half and the right half. If ARR of mid, that is the midpoint value, the value at the midpoint is greater than the value that we want to find out, then our value will be residing in the leftmost side, right, because it is a sorted array. So in that case, we will reduce the interval from the right hand side. So now I'm going to say right equals to mid minus one. So now we are only interested in the first half or the left half of the array. So obviously this while loop will keep on executing till we find a match wherein the midpoint or the value at the midpoint will match the X. And once we match it, we just return it. And if we do not find a match, there will be a time when the interval will get exhausted and this statement will be false. So we will come out of the while loop. And if we basically come out of the while loop without any return mid statement, it would mean that we did not find any match, right? So in that case, we will say return minus one because ultimately we have to return some value, right? Because it is a integer return type. So we'll say return minus one and minus one is not a valid index, right? We do not have minus one as index in arrays the index position always starts from zero. So we can use it as an indicator to say that we did not find any match. So this is basically our complete binary search function. So you converted the entire algorithm into binary search function in C++ code. You can use this same algorithm and you can implement it in Java or Python also. Only the syntax will change here and there, but pretty much everything will be the same when it comes to the algorithm. So yeah, this was our program. Let's see if this works. I'm going to save this. I'm going to say execute compile and run. And there you go in our first run itself. Everything is working fine. Let's enter 10 integer digits. I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 for simplicity purpose. Hit enter. Now it is asking enter one number that you want to search in the array. So let's enter 8. And there you go. You can see match found at index position 7. So index position starts from zero, right? So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that's why we've returned the index position seven. The actual position is actually eighth position, right? So you can say index plus one if you want the actual position, but this is the index position because index starts from zero. That's why it is one less than the actual position. So let's try to run this one more time. I'm again going to enter 10 numbers. And now let's enter a number which is not there in the array. Let's enter 11. When I hit enter, I'm getting no match found. So this is because it is returning minus one. So we are coming at this point and return minus one is stored in the output. And we're checking if output is equal equal to minus one, we have to print no match found. So yeah, this is our binary search algorithm implemented in the form of C++ code in the form of a binary search function. Now, before we conclude, I just want to say that binary search can also be implemented in the form of a recursive function. Now, in this case, in our case, we are using a while loop. So it's a simpler way. However, you can also use a concept of recursive function over here. And if you don't know what recursive function is, I have a separate video on recursive functions. I'll drop the link in the video description. If you want to see binary search being implemented using recursive functions, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to make one more video wherein we use recursive functions. And yeah, that's it for this video, guys. This is our binary search algorithm using C++ programming. I hope you've understood the program part, the implementation phase. And that's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how this video was. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.